So, I wanted to make this a mini episode for Galactic Hunter and uh, this is a really big surprise because Antoine's birthday is in about a week and uh, he's the type of person that already kind of like doesn't want anything so what I wanted to do was take him to experience a Bortle 1 zone which is uh, the clearest skies that you can get unless you're like out in the middle of the ocean and you know in the middle of the night so I was doing some research and I found some a place here in Nevada and it's near Tonopah and I've already booked a room there in Tonopah for us to go away this weekend and he doesn't know and I'm like I'm like super excited but also I'm like really nervous because I'm not very good at keeping secrets. Just imagine, on our way there, California's basically right beyond those mountains. Oh yeah, this is a kind of surprise I like. We filmed this two and a half years ago, but we never edited the videos because we still get a bit of PTSD thinking about that weekend. You'll find out why soon enough. I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a sand tornado there. It looks pretty cool. The drive to Tonopah is about three and a half hours away. All we could think of the whole drive was, wow, we're finally going to be under one of the darkest sky areas in the US. Finally. We had plenty of time before dark, so we decided to make a pit stop by a popular ghost town, Rhyolite. <laughs> Goldfield Open Air Museum in Rhyolite, which is right near Beatty, which is about halfway to Tonopah. It's a ghost town. It's a little spooky, but we'd love to come back at night someday. Not sure if we would be able to image from there with a telescope, but it has an open view and will make for a great episode. Okay, so we arrived in Tonopa, Nevada. It's extremely cold. Um, right now it's what time? 6 p.m. It's like 6 p.m. now. And we have to wait until 9 p.m. because the moon will be up until 9. It's supposed to be uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is freezing point or zero degrees Celsius. Hopefully there will be no snakes or more. No wild animals. Yeah. I'm so. staying in the trunk of our car. We'll try to do some Milky Way and some other stuff. All right, let's wait. Okay, we're gonna go now because it's almost eight and we need some time to set up. So let's get all of our warm clothes and get on the road. So we finally arrived here at a Portal One zone and we're about to get out and see what it looks like for the first time. Um, we turned this light on, which is going to ruin our night vision, but just so you guys can, can see us. And um, I'm really, really scared to be disappointed because I'm so used to Nelson's Landing, which is a border 3. I don't know how much difference it's going to be. And um, the moon is still there. It's setting right now. But um, yeah, let's let's see. I can't film because you won't see anything, but... I'll take a picture and we'll see. And this is what we saw. Thousands and thousands of stars above us. This is a colorful picture, but with our own eyes, this was the best representation of what we saw. The one thing that wowed us the most was that we could see the air glow on the horizon, which we'll show you soon in the upcoming time lapse. We tried recreating how the Milky Way was with our eyes, if this was our usual spot, a bottle of 3 Milky Way, 
This is what a bottle of wine looks like. Unfortunately, the mount sank, so we weren't able to track properly or aim correctly. We were so beat, um, but we took off the telescope and decided to take a few wide shots with the DSLR camera. And it shouldn't really be affected by the bad tracking if the lens is wide enough. Okay, so I'm going to use this setup, this one here to hold my, my actual camera. So it's still tracking. So I can just put my camera here and um, use about three minutes of exposure, even more actually, since it's going to be a, a lens, uh, I can just do long exposures. I'm just going to do a few random ones, completely random, and we'll see what we have. A few Milky Way, a few towards Andromeda, a few, we'll see. And I also have this one here. That has been doing a time lapse for a long time. And yeah, the sky is awesome. And Dalia is here, frozen to death. Mm -hmm. Completely frozen. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's, let's do the exposures and then. Alright, so now we're leaving. M31 was visible. What? Just look at the road, man. You don't have to look at the camera. Our evening was completely ruined. On top of being disappointed and tired, we got hit it to a point that we thought we'd end up in a town cemetery. We couldn't image anything that night. And of course, we understood why once everything was packed away. And we were so devastated that we didn't realize it sooner. But we were also relieved because it was a mistake on our end, not the equipment. At the very least, we had a place to sleep for the night before we took our long drive home. Alright, let's not let our hobby ruin our mood. Let's do our best to try to have fun during the day before our second attempt at imaging from a dark location, like we'd always hoped. So we're waiting for the sun to go down again. Um, day two. Um, in the meanwhile, we're going to explore this huge solar panel uh, area there with a drone, and I think it's gonna look very, very nice. So, let's try. What you're about to see, my friends, is the icing on the cake. Every time that we think about that second night, it just fills us with so much dread. It's pretty much the textbook definition of bad luck. It's been like three years now since that fateful weekend, and I almost want to cry every time I think about it. So, we had just taken our first test shot of the night, the Helix Nebula. And it looked great, it was incredible. And everything was fine, and we were setting up to shoot or send off our next series of photos. And then this happened. So, second night, everything on the telescope is going perfectly fine. We managed to balance everything perfectly and level everything. And of course, right now, is the only time we're in a border one zone, and when everything goes perfectly fine, our computer dies. You don't even know how enraged we are right now. We were planning to do the Iris Nebula as well as the Helix Nebula, and our computer just died. So we cannot guide. And it's really, really, really pissing us off because... Why today? Why? 
Let me show you guys what we have so far. Unguided, sadly, uh, Helix Nebula. On the left is a 3 minute shot of the Helix Nebula from our usual imaging spot at the time, a Bortal 3-4 zone. On the right is the same shot from that Bortal 1. The difference is insane. We thought about imaging all night unguided, but to be honest, we were so sad and unmotivated that we wasted no time and packed up. Then we started our long drive, and of course it gets better. We got a ticket on the way home. This was the kind of night <laughs> that makes you want to quit astrophotography altogether. But we were glad that we still found ways to have fun during the day. We love the town of Tonopah. It's so cool and interesting. And if the first night wasn't ruined by that mishap, and then the thing with the second night, we would have had the best birthday weekend. The biggest takeaway from this story is, one, always press really hard on your mount so it's pre-sunk into the ground if you are not on concrete. And two, just don't be unlucky. So we'll see you guys next time and clear skies. Thanks, guys.